Hi everyone, my name's Katie and I spend a lot of time talking to the NHS about technology. And although a lot of the face-to-face -face meetings that I have with the trusts I support have now stopped, uh, the conversations haven't. And I really wanted to take some time to, um, to share some of those conversations. I'm hearing loads of brilliant ideas, uh, speaking to people across the board, whether it be from IT teams that are working hard, long hours behind the scenes of um, various hospitals to make sure that that technology and the infrastructure keeps the hospitals going in the background, um, all the way through to GPs. Uh, that are literally having conversations with their patients um, and I'm hearing some incredible ideas and stories and so really I just wanted to bring some of that information together in the hope that it might help somebody somewhere. So there were three things that really stood out to me uh, in those conversations from last week. Uh, the first one was with an IT support manager uh, he works for a large hospital and within that hospital the IT team have made the decision that they are going to split their team in two. 50% are going to work from home and 50% are going to work in the hospital. Uh, the aim of that really is that if those who are working in the hospital end up getting poorly then they can swap those shifts and the home workers can come in. And so he really came to me for advice on what licenses he needed to buy to get his home workers up and running as he needed them to be. Um, and it was very interesting because they currently have a Mitel telephony system in place. And when we actually did some digging into the licenses that they had on that system, it actually turned out that he already had the licenses he needed. So four years ago, when they bought the system, uh, they bought 400 UCC licenses, which enabled them to set up their remote workers from home. And ultimately, that meant that he didn't need to spend any extra money. Uh, the technology was already there. It's just that they'd never implemented it or used it. And I think that's really key for a lot of IT managers that are looking to get their home workers set up, is that rather than having to make more investments and go through the process of raising more POs, uh, which all takes time, it might be that you actually have what you need. And I know Mitel often give away demo licenses that may well be there in the background as an option for you to use. So that's something really key to just be aware of and to think about. So the next thing, um, totally different conversation, is with a GP uh, that I know very well and she actually phoned me up and um, she is non-technical uh, but she knows that I work in IT and she had just been told that she had a Microsoft Teams licence and she wanted to set up a call for the GPs within her practice for everybody to come on that call, those who are remote that are doing telephone conversations with their patients and she had no idea what to do or where to start. And so it was really just a case of talking her through the very simple steps of how to set up a Teams meeting. So jumping onto my laptop, for any GPs that are watching, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to show you what I showed her. So if you open up the Teams app on the left hand side here, clicking on the Teams icon, you can then go down to the bottom, join or create a team, and then click here to create a team. And for this particular GP, she is a senior partner of a practice and wanted to set up a team with her GPs within that practice. So firstly, build a team from scratch. She wanted a private team. And we'll call this, for the purpose of the demo, GPs. Go to create. And then you simply add in the email addresses of anybody that you want to be part of this team. So I'm going to add in my own team. And she added her 10 GPs within her practice. We Add them in and press close. And that then sets up your team. So we can see here um, that you can write posts. So you can write messages to everybody in your team. So here we've already got everybody responding. And the great thing is it shows here if that person is available. So you can see that Liz has got a little green light. Paul is red. So he's obviously in a meeting at the moment. He will be on a call, but still able to message me. So that's a really good feature. You can then go to files where you can upload files. Um, so it could be information that you want to share amongst those GPs. So a really good way of collaborating and communicating. Now, another thing she wanted to do was actually set up a call with her GPs as a pre-clinic at the start of every day. Um, now, you can do this in different ways, but I'm going to show you how I showed her. 
So we simply went into her calendar. She wanted to set up a daily meeting. Um, so um, we went in for eight o'clock, starting on the 7th of April. We'll call this pre-clinic call. And then the Teams icon comes up in your calendar. So you click on that and it auto populates into the invite and this will go out to anybody that you invite. So again, she could invite everybody within her team. She could invite additional people to this. It comes in, auto populates the Microsoft Teams meeting and we can send that out to the team. You can set that out as a daily recurrence if you wanted to, um, but I'm just going to very quickly demo this so you can see, uh, so you can just see how it works. So there we go. It's come up in my calendar. So at that particular time, eight o'clock on the seventh, her team will see that that call is up in her calendar. They click into it, and it's quite a simple process of clicking on Join Microsoft Teams meeting. And that will then set up a Teams call from Outlook. And I'll just show you how that works. So this will just be connecting into Teams and then calling through to the various people on that call. So we press join now, that connects. You can see, um, there we go, that my video then automatically turns on. And let's see if anyone's available to join. Ah, oh, here we go. So, um, hey guys. Brilliant. Hi, guys. So we can see that Liz and Paul have joined. Um, so that's fantastic. It worked perfectly. So thanks, guys, for coming on. No problem. Um, and hopefully that is useful. It just shows you how you can set up a call, how you can set up um, a meeting with your team. And um, yeah. That was perfect for her setting that call up with her GPs. So thanks, guys. I'm going to hang up now. The third conversation that I had today, actually, um, is around a trust. And I just think they've had a really cool idea. Um, so what they want to do is actually purchase some devices that they can roll out onto their wards uh, to give their patients the ability to connect virtually with their relatives and their loved ones. So whether that be on a call or on a face to face um, conversation and my initial thought was that, well, surely most people can do that on their smart devices. But the thing is, a lot of people who are in hospital don't have a smart device, maybe have never even used that technology. And so I love just that innovative idea of, um, they call it virtual visiting hours. Um, just bringing in that ability, probably for quite a relatively low cost, that gives patients that ability to connect with their relatives. So they're the three things um, over the last week um, of just very different things. But I just really hope that as I'm having these conversations and bringing together that information um, and sharing that with all those other people, those other trusts that I know are working hard behind the scenes, I really hope that it will be useful. There might be just one thing that comes out that just sparks an idea. So thank you for watching and I hope you find these useful.